Um, okay, so Hess's law, remember that you, you have these tables of, um, of G and S and CP. And um, now we talked a lot about why we use formation energies because all things are relative and we don't know the absolutes. Uh, we have uh, the heat capacity, uh, we tend to do these at constant pressure because we're in a constant pressure temperature world now that we're in chapter 6, now that we're doing reactions. We like to do things at constant temperature and pressure. We have entropy because we know how to calculate the absolute entropy. Unfortunately, we don't with G and A. Oh, well, we, we kind of do now using big computers and quantum mechanics, but let's not. So anyway, so that's why that's different. Um, we need to know the heat capacity and the absolute entropy to get the delta G at different temperatures. Okay, so um, A goes to B, what you do if you want delta G is you look up the, um, the, the delta G formation of B minus the delta G formation of A. I'm talking about high school stuff. There's your answer. Now the reason I have H, S, and C, P is if you want to go, if you want this at a different temperature, which is going to be kind of frequent, it gives me questions to ask as well. This you do have on your homework. Uh, the Kirchhoff's law um, equation is up here. That, again, I'm just reviewing. It's it's about as hard. It's not hard. It's a high school level thing. I, I think I'm pretty sure. Actually, I remember doing this in high school. Uh, and hope, maybe you did in freshman camp. Maybe you didn't. Um, it, anyway, here it is. It's a mess of numbers. Uh, instead of uh, what I talked about last time was instead of adjusting. Instead of adjusting the individual G's of products minus reactants, what you can do is calculate the change, overall change in heat capacity of products minus reactants. And that this equation is ultimately, although long, it's still a shortcut. And what it's equivalent to is calculating delta H at a new temperature. Again, that means 298, so that's the a, a temperature adjustment. Notice that I'm assuming that heat capacities are not temperature dependent. Um, they're weakly temperature dependent, so even this is an approximation, it's not a bad one. Um, and so it ends up being delta H minus T delta S at different temperatures. Symbologies, notice I didn't include any little knots. Not that you have to worry about that, I'm just trying to be really careful, especially when you're writing a textbook. Okay, and then on your homework I also had you compare the uh, gibbs Duhem, gibbs um, Helmholtz equation result, which I talked about last time. Uh, and that's, an, that's basically Kirchhoff's law where you don't include the heat capacity uh, dependence on enthalpy, which is a really, really not a good idea. Um, and I wanted to, to point out that if you solve this with the uh, heat capacity, oh, I think I was going to put this up. It's a really, really long derivation to, um, if you bring over dt and integrate in this form, it's easy. Uh, but if you include, if you include this, if you include this into the um, mix, which, which you, you should, by the way, uh, if you include this, it, it unfortunately gets pretty complicated. You see, you've got a couple of T's now, and when you integrate it, it gets kind of complicated, uh, but you end up with uh, Kirchhoff's law. It ends up being the exact, exact same thing. So maybe I'll try to post that, but nothing like that is on the exam. I, I, I don't even like putting that on homework. Um, so anyway, anyway, so that's where we're at. We're all okay. Uh, now, here's what we're getting into, um, and this, as much as I, I do tend to, you know, get a little nutty when we get to uh, Hess's Law, because again, it's just kind of ultra boring. Um, here's the part where this gets really kind of cool, so I hope you like this. Okay, okay, so let me ask you this. A goes to B, delta G is G of formation B minus G of formation A. Right? Right? Yeah. No, no, you've been lied to. It's more complicated than that. That is not the delta G, that's not the delta G of the reaction. That's an approximation. That is an approximation if the reaction goes to completion. If all A turns into B, then that would be the delta G of the reaction. That's what you would measure. How many reactions go to completion? Very few. Eh, yeah, not too many. Um, Hydrogen, oxygen, light a match. Okay, that, that one will go to completion, all right? So we've got TNT blowing up. Some of them go to completion, but a lot of them don't. But then, so what's the proper delta G, right? It's not, it's not, it's not a product minus reactant. It's not that. So if it's not always true, then you've learned an approximation. So there you go. 
I will get to that Monday next. All right, so I'm just setting you up. This is why we're covering this stuff. It's because we 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 always have not been telling you the truth, and, and it's uh, like a lot worse than you realize. Um, okay, with that said, what do I want to get into? Um, I do want to point out. Do I want to do this? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me uh, let me just segue. I was going to talk about some different stuff, but uh, never mind. Open systems. Okay, now open systems. Up till now, we've always been holding n constant, the number of moles, n constant. The magic cylinder did not have a hole in it. Now, when I say open systems, uh, I am going to let I'm going to let n change now, but I'm not going to let n change by a hole in the cylinder. I'm going to let n change by a reaction. Now, in A goes to B, uh, technically, whether all A or all B are in between, technically the, number, the total number of moles hasn't changed, and that makes this analysis easier. But the moles of A have changed, and the moles of B are changing. A is going down, B is going up. That technically counts as an open system. A goes to 2B, or 2A goes to 1B, that definitely seems like an open system because I'm gaining or losing total gas. Though it actually hardly matters, but when A goes to 2B and you're, and you're pressurizing as a result, it actually makes it a little bit more complicated. And that's actually number 15 on your homework that we'll do next time. That shows you how it's a little bit more complicated. I'll start with A goes to B, where total number of moles doesn't change, and then I'll show you a little bit about how you adjust for A goes to 2B or 2A goes to B. In other words, when pressure, total pressure is changing, I'll show you how to make adjustments. It, it's not such a hard fix. It's just an addition. So I'll start with a simple example. OK, so again, open systems is not a hole in the magic cylinder. It's gases reacting. Because a uh, hole in the magic cylinder, um, as much as that would allow N to change, it's kind of trivial and stupid. So uh, whereas chemical reactions are much more relevant. All right, now, uh, the <coughs> thing where this gets nasty is, is this. Uh, change in internal energy. See, there's an energetic consequence. There's an energetic consequence to uh, things appearing or disappearing. Right? Uh, matter has energy. Every, unless, unless you're at zero degrees, matter, even at zero degrees, matter still has energy. It has nuclear energy, technically. It actually has energy in its electrons, the part that makes change in internal energy hard. Anyway, I'm battling. OK. TDS minus PDV, hopefully you got that down. Here's how you change internal energy. Now, it's kind of silly. It's kind of silly, um, and it is. It's just kind of silly. Oh, I don't like that end. There we go. It's a better end. OK. What's the change in N with respect to N and multiply by the change in N? <laughs> right. Well, no, it just is what it is. All right, there's not much to it. OK, dot, dot, dot. Let's do delta G, which is most relevant, minus uh, SBT. Plus VDP. Okay, uh, again, same thing. We're in the T and C world. Okay, so those are the energetic consequences to the um, magic cylinder, but now I got chemicals. Oh, and the chemicals are reacting, right? So that's, that's and that means open systems, and there you go. Okay, uh, what can I say about this? Um, okay, now remember how I said that spontaneous. Uh, Constant T, constant P. From now on, constant T, constant P. That means, uh, I pointed out, some of you said, I remember one of you I heard say, oh, but delta G is zero. It can't be less than zero. Remember, spontaneous at constant T, constant P means delta G is negative, like you learned in high school. But how? Because these terms are zero. Not that term, not that term. That can be negative, and that's what we're going for. Okay, now. So a little heads up on that. So we're, we're going to be working. This is why these energies can still be negative when their natural variables are held constant. Uh, it, it, it's relevant to chemicals being transformed. Reactions or, or even phase transitions, which still counts. And that's, that's what I'll start with today. Now, the negative of this is, if I was in your seat, Maxwell relations, which are on the exam, what's dg, D? a constant S, yada, yada, yada. Have I not just, uh, you know, with all these D, X, D, Y, D, Zs, 
okay, DG, and I've got all this stuff on top, and now I can divide by God knows what and hold what constant? How many, how many new equations have I opened up? How many new derivations could you do now that I tacked on another term? It would grow as like the square, right? Because it's like if I increase the number of terms this way and then I'm dividing by um, P and T and blah, 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 then that's like this way and the total number of derivations like the area. So it's like I basically like, not doubled, but squared the number of derivations Right? Are you scared? Not really. You look sleepy, but anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. It turns out I haven't. And this is so weird. Because the energy terms are very unique because they don't have the same set of, you know, TDS or minus STT. Each one is different because then they'd be the same thing. Okay. And so when I take these terms on, I'm like, oh, well, then now they're still more different. Well, get, watch this. Watch this. This is kind of cool. Okay, now you can get a little cross-eyed. This is going to span across the board, by the way. So uh, be, be a little careful. Okay, minus change in TS. Now again, you, you really need to be comfortable with this. That's another reason I'm writing this. Not only should you know that U is, G is U minus TS plus PD. You should know that. You should know how to do these changes. You should know that I'm going to write these out. I'm going to write I'm going to, I'm going to divide by DP or something. Anyway, all right, now for this purpose, Here's what I do. This is a guy who's really talkative today, so yeah, he's not that off. Um, okay, so here's what I'm doing, and, and this is where it gets a little cross-eyed, okay? I'm going to insert this here. Actually, I have to wipe this out. I don't have enough room. I'm going to insert this for G, and, and here I'm, I'm inserting this. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. And, and I can tell I'm going to run out of room, so, um, so here, let me... Let me just wipe this out. This is really, really long. It's in the book, by the way, in case you, um, yeah, how much does this center further? Uh, anyway, okay, so DG is minus TDS, no, no, no minus SDT. You see I'm going off, you um, can tell already, I'm doing this off the top of my head. But it's not too hard. So the, the main thing that gets a little difficult here is, um, is not getting confused where the, where the terms come from. So I just wrote DG. DU is uh, minus PDV uh, plus TD, TDS plus the change in U with respect to N. U is an S and V guy. Okay, minus TDS minus SBT plus PDV. You see why I needed? Okay. Okay. Uh, question. Are you giving us the Maxwell equations on the test? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's do this instead. Right, because this could be on the test too. Um, all right, so so again, uh, hideous, right? Hideous. But you should be able to do this. Okay, now what? Now what? Um, if the same term is on both sides, if the same term is on both sides, it gets wiped out. Okay, minus SDT, so I'm looking over there. So remember, if I bring it over, it becomes plus SDT. I'm just going to be easy about it. Okay, plus VDP. Okay, there we go. All right, so, so work with me on this because it gets, you may get confused in your notes. So otherwise, watch the video. Okay, on the right side, I have, what was that? What was that? Uh, wait, what, 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 what? You, you lost me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I happen to have uh, like terms on the right and left. Uh, minus plus PDV, TDS minus TDS. Now again, I, I know that this is this is horrific, but look what I got. Look what I got. I hear you, by the way, and I even know your voice. <laughs> We're writing a different test for you. Okay, <laughs> this is not a Maxwell equation. Uh, there you go. Now it turns out that um, what, what you have here, in case it's not clear, you have a saving grace. All the energy, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, so, I'm not proving these by the way. It's the same thing, a little bit less complicated because A and H are a little bit simpler than, than G. 
Remember G is a double Legendre transform? I, I wanted to give you the hardest one. Yeah, there you go. Oh, and I divided by DN too. I divided by DN. Um, yeah, that, actually I remember when I wrote the textbook, I forgot that, that was in, anyway. Okay, so it turns out that all these, the energy, the uh, change in energy with respect to moles, all of them are the same. Now, there's a little nuance here, what's held constant. Their natural variables held constant, and hopefully you recognize the natural variables of all the different energy functions. But here's the thing, they're all the same. The good news is, is that that actually eliminates my ability to give you uh, more derivations that are all like completely different. How, you know, like DG, sorry, DHDP versus DUDP, those are not, they're not identical. They're not terribly different, but they're not identical. Um, whereas if I tried to mess with you and, I, and I'm doing things with, with DG, DN, then they are identical. Uh, so all of these are equal to, we just call it chemical potential. Right, they're all the same. Again, big picture. I'm not gonna hark on this again. Sometimes I put these on homework, like, like prove H is equal to A, something like that. I didn't in your case, and I don't think I have it on the test because I don't know that it really means a lot to you. It doesn't really mean that much to me. Again, the big picture is it does simplify the analysis of open systems. That's, that's, what, that's the takeaway. And again, we call it chemical potential. Okay, now here's another thing um, that you've got to get used to. I'll start over here. Um, this isn't relevant right now. It will be, so maybe you want to just absorb this, um, what happens is there's some symbology to this and I will try to be very consistent, but if you get stuck with what I'm talking about, this might help you. This is also why I focus on units. What I'm doing now is I'm talking about more than one chemical. I'm using the letter I and I'm saying there's K components. And that means, and that means what's in the pot, what's reacting with what. That means components. Okay, now, as I mentioned before, there could also be different phases. Um, there could also be different phases. So this is more, let's just call it stuff. So ammonium is reacting with oxygen. In other words, I'm burning ammonium. Okay, oxygen and ammonium. That's, so I've got a K of two. Okay, now let me put down um, if you have more than one phase, uh, this actually gets a little bit more complicated. And what's really important here, uh, you really do kind of need to remember this, not for this exam, but for the next one. We use Greek letters. We use Greek letters for different phases. Uh, and this is because, oh, and we have, we have a R, R number of phases, K components, K components in R phases. Now again, the reason I, will, I, I really want you to, to remember that is um, because it may help you, like when you get confused, what the heck, what the heck is going on? Uh, you may say, "Oh, well, that's got a Greek letter, so, so that's a phase that doesn't have a Greek letter." He's talking about a chemical. Again, that's that comes up a lot when we. Um, so again, if I'm just saying everything is a gas, or or I have some, you know, it's not. An example. Burning methane, I like burning methane, especially for 342. Um, liquid water could be a product, in fact it often is, in which case you need to be using this. So anyway, look out for that. Now, as we do our, I want to do the first chemical reaction, open system, and I kind of got this, I got this from a book, I repeated it in my book, which is the only area that I'm a little afraid I may get a copyright claim at some point. I should say that on the camera, gee. Uh, a good question. question. So that second summation there for the phases, does that go? Yeah, th this includes phases. Does, does that go with the component? Some or do or, or is one interchanged with the other? Uh, uh, yeah, these are separate equations. I mean, yeah, is that what you're asking? Yeah. So we have yeah, yeah, either one summation or the other, not both. Yeah. 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 So well, here, let me let me make it more clear by just right. You know, I was just trying to be. Um, I was just saving my my hand a little bit of hand motion. There we go. Uh, by not writing it out twice, so um, and, and it would be very clear uh, that uh, that I'm talking about a homogeneous. Everything's in the gas phase, or oh, oh liquid water dropped out. Then you use this one. 
Uh, question. There's supposed to be an I subscript to the partial N outside of the summation. Right there? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I spotted. I was actually, I did that on purpose. I was waiting for one of you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of haters. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, um, we're going to do our first chemical reaction. And we're going to point out some paradigms that define how things react. And, uh, and again, I, I do. It is kind of fascinating to me that phase transitions count as chemical reactions. And I hope that this, I think you'll appreciate it. Right now, this is going to sound kind of boring, but hopefully you'll appreciate it. Because it's way easier to do this analysis than anything else that I'm going to throw at you. Probably not, again, we didn't, I just, I just didn't quite get to um, the material for questions 14 and 15. Just didn't quite get to them. Uh, so when, when we cover that, when we cover that, some other point, you'll appreciate how much easier this is to other, understand. Kind of also like how I did magic cylinder. That, 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 that's kind of like you're going nuts on me today. Really the worst talking day you've ever had, so please stop. Remember, crazy guy, lots of grants do. Um, doesn't help that my figures aren't nice. There we go. All right, so there we go. Ice melting. Okay, could not get easier. It's okay, looking at it. No, there's no anyway. All right, now I'm going great. Okay, we're going to be at zero degrees C and one bar. Oddly enough, this is so weird. Pressure will always be one bar, but the bar is not a, not SI. I go figure. As long as you're, uh, you know, the thing is. Uh, pressure always is divided by pressure. In all the equations we're doing, pressure is always divided by pressure. So it doesn't matter what, which pressure you use. So that's why that, that's kind of neat. It kind of fixes itself. Okay, so this is an equilibrium. Okay, now this is kind of neat. I, I mentioned this to you before, and you, you got the answer right. So I was impressed with that. Uh, is anything happening? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay, now remember I said to you, what happens if I put an ice cube in a very, very accurate freezer at zero degrees, one, uh, one bar pressure, and I don't mess with, I mean, it's like perfect. We can do that. You'd be surprised how well engineered, refrigerators can be engineered incredibly well. I wait a year, what have I got, an ice cube or an ice uh, slurry? Yeah, no, you're thinking in the right direction. What does it look like? What does it look like? It's not a cube anymore, it's a ball, right, it's a nice sphere. You know, like, shut up, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> oh. <laughs> so something is happening, by the way, which is, it's a surface thing. Um, what happens is, is that nature abhors surfaces, and nature doesn't like sharp points, so what's actually happening is, the little water molecules at the corner, they're coming off, and water, uh, water in the liquid phase, it's all H2O, is actually sticking onto the sides. Um, oh, so that looks kind of awful, sorry. Um, well, hopefully you, you, know, you get the picture. I asked you about this before, and you got it right, and I did that because I was, I was trying to get you ready for today, by the way, because I knew this would come up. Um, at equilibrium, you know, why, why do I even ever bring up equilibrium? Right? What would be the point? Nothing's happening. Actually, there is. It's just imperceptibly small. So if you wait a year, you're going to get an ice sphere. And that's because, and it's also fair to say, when a little water molecule happens to basically fall off, one of them, one of them jumps back on to maintain equilibrium. So, so there is stuff happening. That's, that's what I want to point out. OK, but still, for this little microscopic reaction of just, say, one one molecule falling off and one falling on. What's dg? It is at equilibrium, and then the constant temperature and pressure. Zero. zero. Right, it would be zero. That's fair to say. Not that there's nothing happening. Now, let me use the correct symbology. Now, again, you know, um, I want to point out that if you have trouble with this, if you basically don't remember what, what's, you know, oh, do I use alpha or do I use the number one? 
Don't worry about it. It's, I just want to make sure that I present it according to the correct standards, because I, I should. But if you don't remember these little details, I don't care. It's not, and you don't need to remember this right to get, um, to, to answer the questions. Uh, but technically, I'm talking about different phases, so I use, I use Greek letters and I use superscript. So just wanted to point that out. Um, and again, the, 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 my point being is, if you get a little confused about what I'm talking about, then that might help you get unstuck. So that's why I do want to emphasize that. Okay, now, of course, the G, the N for a particular phase is the chemical potential of that phase. And um, we will use the convention of alpha 1 is, is ice. Remember that's solid water. Now, I'm technically not. Um, I will call the liquid, I will call that water. So this gets a little funky. This is, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not using the correct terminology here. It's all water. <laughs> But I'll call the liquid water. Right? So I think you know your, your instincts tell you what's what. So again, I'm going to say that the liquid phase is water, and that the solid phase is ice. Technically, it's all water. All right. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Now, here's the conjecture. Some ice melts. Some of the ice melts, and that makes the change in uh, uh, the change in and one is negative, the change in N two is positive. Right, now again, it's okay that this happens as long as it's only a few molecules that are doing it. And that's actually true. This is, this is happening. And that's why it takes, it really takes a long time. You're not gonna do this overnight. If you set up your, uh, your freezer for zero, it, it would take a really long time for an ice cube to turn to a sphere, it will. So it shows that something is happening, but it's awfully slow because you're at equilibrium. Uh, so anyway, this all does work out. What is mu equal to? Um, what here? Yeah. Uh, the chemical potential. Um, now you know, I, I think I know what you're thinking. You know that, like on your homework, on 1514, which I took off, that you need to put numbers to, to paper, right? I will show you what this is. By the way, it's delta G of formation. It's actually the delta G of formation. But I thought that anyway. I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. Delta G of formation per mole. Uh, for now, let's just, let's just work with this. Uh, we'll do that after the exam. Uh, because again, yeah, it will require you to actually use numbers. OK, now what we get out of this, this is uh, hopefully so simple you want to talk to your neighbor. Uh, what you get out of this, this is probably one of the neater things that we do. And then the next thing thing we do is I show you why uh, this idea of products minus reactants is actually wrong. <laughs> That's really cool too. Um, well, I hope, you, I hope you think it's neat. Okay, so let's go back. So sorry for my use of the board. I'm working right to left. Okay, uh, chemical potential. Uh, what is one again? Uh, ice change in moles of ice plus the chemical potential of water change in moles of water. Now remember, another thing is. Don't worry about what's plus or minus. Uh, things add. Energies add. If they choose to be negative, that's their problem. You just add them up. Okay, now, now here's the thing. Let me go back here. Again, sorry for my use of the board. Since all of this is still H2O, it's true that minus the change in, in minus the change of ice is the change in the liquid. It has to be, it's the same thing. That's why phase transitions are way easier to work with when we're at this stage. Okay, and again, that's a minus, not a dash, that's a minus. Remember the change in N1 is negative. You lost some ice, minus minus is positive, but we know that the change in liquid is positive because it has to be. Okay, now that allows me then to uh, substitute um, uh, let's see, I'm going to uh, make that, okay, now before you, you, you lose your mind, the minus sign came from substituting minus N1 for plus N2. Yeah, right here, I just substituted. Okay, now that means that, what's kind of interesting about this is that um, this is like one of the most important chemical uh, um, principles that you can calculate. 
this one of the most important chemical principles that exists, and it's like incredibly easy to show. Okay, now what do you conclude from this? Uh, um, sorry, let me let me let me make it easy for you. Therefore, oh, I don't like that. Therefore, or we'll explode if I don't get it right. Okay. Yes, because because and again, in my little it's a little thought experiment, but that's where it is true. Ice cubes turn to ice spheres. That this is not zero, and that means that the chemical potential of things in equilibrium are in fact equal. Now, uh, note that what this means is is it doesn't mean that the, the Gibbs energy Gibbs energy because we're at constant temperature and pressure. That will always be true. If that wasn't true, I'd be talking. If we're at constant volume, if I put a lid on this, I'd be doing A. But I don't have a lid on it. It's at constant pressure. It's G. This does not say that the Gibbs energy of things in equilibrium are equal. It says the Gibbs energy per mole of things at equilibrium are equal. It's a subtlety. That one does matter. Okay. Now, as before, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead here, but um, you know that in the table, in the in the back of the book, all right, you remember it's CP delta FH delta FG per mole per mole, right? Guess what? Now, this is the definition of chemical potential but it can be integrated to be equal to G per mole. Uh, I'm sorry, G, G per, ah, sorry, this is what happens when I go off the cuff. Right? It's this, it's this real subtlety. Uh, chemical potential is the change in G, change in N, but they can be integrated because they're extensive. And it makes it G, per, G divided by N, which is G per mole, which is the delta formation G per mole. Same thing. So that's where you get numbers for this. Okay. All right. Next bit is what defines when you're not in equilibrium. Okay. So tell you, tell you what. Let me go over here since I'm not using the board super well. Okay. Let's raise the temperature one degree. Okay. So at. Okay. So the ice is definitely going to melt. But there's a big difference. Uh, what's DG? DG is not zero. Plus minus? Plus. No. Minus, right. So remember, I'm talking about ice melting. Now, now I know, I, I don't know who said that, but um, I know what you're thinking, that like we tend to, in our culture, we tend to say positive is good, positive is when things happen. No, not when it comes to energy. Negative is good. So kind of remember not to fall into that instantaneous like gut reaction when it comes to energy. Negative energies are good. So, um, so yeah, don't don't let that get you because um, that that does tend to happen. So I, I'll remind you that quite frequently. Okay. So if the ice is going to melt, then the delta G is less than zero joules. Okay. Now, uh, let me remind you that I'm actually writing the same thing. Uh, and I'm also still going to have the ice melt. Uh, so it is still true that, um, OK, so what you end up with is um, difference in chemical potential. I'm actually writing the same thing. But now it's less than 0. Okay, therefore, um, okay, so this is the chemical potential of, wait a minute, wait a minute, are we going this right? Uh, 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 no, 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 and one, okay. Now, remember that this is negative. Remember that this is negative. And therefore, this is what? Positive. Right, it has to be positive. And therefore, what we get out of that is the chemical potential of ice is greater than the chemical potential of water. 
Okay, so when you are out of equilibrium, the thing with the higher chemical potential goes away. Now, you know that ice melts. That's why, again, I'm always starting with a very simple example. Start with magic cylinder, and then I apply them to chemicals. I just have to start giving you real numbers. That's really the only change. Ice melting. Okay, you know ice melts. So the I showed you the chemical potential is higher. But the same thing is true in a chemical reaction. Okay, now again, I asked you this last time. If I look at the table of numbers, and I look at the formation energy of ice and water, which one is more positive? Ice. Ice. You guys are still, now, now you see, you were bored a second ago when I said, energies are negative is good. You just fell into that trap. The delta G of ice is higher. It's more positive. Negative is good. Right, at STP, at standard, standard thermodynamic uh, conditions, liquid water has a lower delta G of formation. That's why it's dominant, because if I magically made ice, it would melt. Okay, now with that, um, I do want to point out what we're coming to next is when we do chemical reactions, by the way. Uh, what happens, what happens, and uh, we're going to do gas phase because, again, it, it's just way easier. I want to point out something that's kind of neat, that if I'm going to have A and D react together, and they'll, they'll react to form C, I have a little partition. I have to mix them together. When I mix them together, right, before they mix, their G's are just their G's of formation. Who thinks that their G's change if I remove this partition and they mix? You think they change? Yeah. Well, why? Because I mean, now it, I mean, now they're like it's a new overall thing. It, it is right now. Now, what thermodynamic function do you think change? G G changed. G became negative. More negative. Remember, that's good. But why? Was it H or S? S. S. Yes, S increased. Now, what about you? What do you think? You, does you change? Sure. These are perfect gases, and they don't interact. Oh, and no. Actually, they, they slightly would because they're technically working. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you were thinking along the right direction. Actually, that was, that was really good. That was really good. Um, they don't interact, but technically there's work being done because A expanded into B space and B expanded into A space. So there's technically an expansion. So there's actually some work done. Okay. But that was good thinking. All right, okay, okay, I know I've gone over. Uh, please pick up your homework if you have it. And, uh,